The 2021 NHL draft is over. Going into it, it wasn't clear if the Avs were going to have any important picks, but they ended up with three picks in the top 100 and a seventh rounder to boot. Did the Avs hit home runs here? I don't think so. But they did add prospect depth to the organization. Oh my goodness gracious! Was it in time? Score! Justice is served! After acquiring a second-round pick for Ryan Graves before the expansion draft, the Avs had a first, a second, and a third, as well as that seventh in this one. They ended up picking 27th in the first round and took Oscar Olausen. Olausen ended up playing a significant amount against men at just 18 years of age, six foot two, 180. There's a lot to like there, especially as he continues to fill out as he gets older. You can see his statistics here are from his time in the Swedish junior leagues. He did have a bit of a tale of two seasons when it comes to his statistics. We'll talk about that more in a little bit. When we take a look at Oscar, to me, I don't love the pick. It's not an awful pick. I think it's just a little bit safe at this point in time. There were other players with higher ceilings, in my opinion. But when we look at him, he does have one NHL skill absolutely ready to go. And that is his skating ability. I don't know if I'd call it elite just yet, but it's pretty darn close to that. He can beat people with his skating in the NHL today. When he's on his game, he can be effective on both ends of the ice when he's being aggressive, hounding after pucks, and using that body that he has. When he is not engaged, obviously he has a tendency to disappear. This isn't a huge issue. It's a thing that happens with a lot of prospects. So not super worried on that one, but he is going to have to learn to be more engaged in every single game, every single night. Offensively, a lot of people have touted his shot quite highly. I'm not quite that high on it. I think it's good, not great. It does seem to be pretty accurate, but I do think it needs a little bit more power, and he needs a bit of a quicker release at times. Again, the more power, hopefully something that comes as his body continues to fill out and he puts on pounds of muscle. He does seem to have a nose for the net and finding the soft spots. Hopefully that will continue to translate into the men's game, and he is pretty good at finishing up in close. There are two major problems for me when it comes to Olausen. Number one, his passing game is not great. He seems to struggle to effectively find teammates at times. This kind of pigeonholes him into playing a pretty simple game. And the other is how is his game going to translate against men? We saw his good statistics against Swedish juniors, but when you look at his men's league stuff, that is the Hockey Elsvenskan second tier league in Sweden and the SHL, the top tier league in Sweden. He only managed six goals and 10 points across 27 games in those two leagues. So the production dropped significantly against men, and you saw some of those issues in his game start to creep up because he can't get away with taking shifts off he can't get away with some of the errant passes against better competition. He also did not play particularly well in international showings this year for Sweden either. So, are there things to like here? Yes, I think so. I think he has one of those typical players with a high floor and low ceiling. There are multiple ways he can get himself to the NHL. If he can use that speed with consistency, he can find ways to be effective defensively and also offensively. I'm not as high as some people are. I don't project him as a potential 30 goal scorer in the NHL or anything like that. I just don't think his shot is quite there. But if everything goes well, you're still looking at a solid middle six player that can provide significant offense, continues to be a great skater, and can be a well-rounded player for the Avs. I do think there is a significant amount of work to be done, though. This is not someone you're going to see coming over and pushing for an NHL job particularly quickly. In fact, I would at least give him one year in Sweden before even bringing him over to the AHL. Let him continue to develop in those systems. Again, this is not a bad pick, but it's not my favorite either. Gets a meh to kind of decent for me. I do like what he's shown in a juniors against his peers. He's shown very, very well, but it's clear that he needs to take some steps when he's playing professional hockey. In the second round, I think the Avs best and most interesting pick of the draft is Sean Behrens, a defenseman out of the USN TDP. He fits right in with the Avs in a lot of ways stylistically. You'll notice he is a bit on the smaller side, but he is also a very good skater. Not great, quite like Olausen is, but 
still very, very strong in that regard to his game. He does have a good offensive sense. I do like him in the offensive zone, and you're going to see him being effective moving pucks with both his feet and his hands. What really makes him interesting, though, is his defensive ability. Despite being on the smaller side, he plays with a lot of tenacity, is never afraid to throw out a hit and do whatever you want him to do. He will go right at dudes that are bigger than him, and he won't care. And if he gets knocked down, he gets right back up and does it again. His solid numbers in the USHL and at the World Juniors, as well as the rest of the U.S. national team's games, do look nice, and you can see that he's going to produce most of his points by distributing and not by scoring. I think another guy that could benefit from a few pounds, if he gets a little bit bigger, he does have an okay slap shot. We're not talking about Sam Gerrard here. He should be able to be a somewhat of a threat from shooting to the outside, but it's still not going to be anything that you really want to rely on. The biggest concern for me is Barron's play style. Will it work against bigger, stronger, older competition? He's going right at players that are his age, 18, still not fully developed. He can do that in juniors. It's okay. He will be able to keep up physically to a certain extent, but what happens when he tries to go at a 6'4", 220-pound player, some of the fully grown men that he'll even see next year in the NCAA. Will it function? And if it does function, will he be able to continue playing that way and not get hurt? If the answer to that question is yes on both ends, then the Avs are going to have a very nice defensive pick on their hands. If one of those is no, Barons is either going to have to figure out how to change his game to play defense effectively, or it could be a bit of a struggle for him. The other interesting question here is, Barons may be too much of a good thing for the Avs. Obviously, you look at the Avs' current defense, and it's hard to find a spot, especially for someone that you're looking at to be an offensive effective puck mover. You look at Kale McCarr locked up long term, Sam Gerrard locked up long term, and the Avs sitting around waiting right now for breakouts from a Bowen Byram or a Connor Timmins. There just isn't a ton of room for another guy like that in Barons. Now, three years from now, after Barons does a couple years of college and joins the AHL squad, that may be a completely different story, but currently it's hard to find a spot for him on the Avs. That doesn't mean he won't hold value and can't find his way onto the roster, though. Then we have the third rounder, Andre Bujalski. This one is kind of a weird pick. I don't completely hate it, but just the concept of drafting a 20-year-old overager with a third round pick is something that I've never really liked. You can draft 18-year-old kids, kids that still have a significantly larger amount of development left to go in their path, and they have just as much, if not more, talent than this kid. That's nothing against him. I think he's a good player. I think there are opportunities for him to succeed, but especially with the ABS organization, they have really struggled when drafting overage kids. They struggle to even figure out what to do with them as we watch multiple overagers get drafted and ultimately not even get signed by the Avs. In Bujalski's case, he obviously has great size when it comes to height. He's a bit of a bean pull right now. He has to pack on weight if he wants to be effective. It's just going to be a fact, especially when you look at the way he played this year in the USHL. Not a very complicated game. He's older, he's bigger, he's stronger. He's going to have to put on weight if he wants to continue to play a drive to the net and score type of game like he did in the USHL. Defensively, not expecting a whole lot there out of him, to be honest. Maybe he finds a way, puts the effort in, and grinds out a decent career by figuring out the defensive side, but as it stands right now, don't really have a whole lot to say about it. Offensively, again, plays a pretty simple game. There is some debate on his shot, and I think that's understandable because trying to pack all of his shots into one, you can't. First of all, his backhand is not good. You cannot trust his backhand at all. He needs to work on that significantly. His wrist shot, I think, is quite solid. He has a tendency at times to hold it a little bit too long. The release is a little bit too slow. But when he does find the space, it is a quite good shot. And he is capable of shooting it faster at times. It's just something that he has to get into the rhythm to. He won't find the time and space to hold on to it at the next level. 
More importantly, though, is his one-timer. He is a very, very good one-timer, and it takes away any opportunity for him to hold onto the puck and do that slower release. He just fires the thing off, he can blast it, and it works well. The problem is, it's hard to tell what his numbers really look like. Because yes, while he did put up very good numbers in the USHL, again, he's 20 years old. He'll be 21 in August, so significantly older than a lot of the players he was playing against. When you look at his previous history of hockey, he played in his home country of Kazakhstan, and I know nothing about that league, to be honest. Can't say that I've ever watched it. I have no idea what the quality of play looks like there. What I do know is looking at it historically, there have not been very many players to ever make the NHL from Kazakhstan. And when you look at this list, more than a couple of those guys ended up playing their junior and childhood hockey in Canada. And they became Kazakhstan Nationals later. So it has not been a league to develop very many players that make it to the NHL full stop. Bujalski will be going to the University of Vermont, the NCAA route, so the Avs will have a couple of years to see what he can play like against players that are more like his peers, other 21, 22, 23, 24-year-olds. And if he can continue to play the same style, if he can hit the gym a lot like NCAA kids often have the opportunity to do, maybe you get something out of him. But I do think that there is probably a long way to go for someone who's going to be already 21, a shorter development track. It has to come quickly for him to make it work. And finally, just for fun, the Avs took Kale McCarr's brother, Taylor McCarr, in the seventh round. Look, it's a great story. I think it's a super cool gesture from the Avs. It's just a seventh round pick. Not really a big deal if you light it on fire a little bit. McCarr is fun. I don't think Taylor really has a track to the NHL, but maybe he has a great year at UMass this first year, and we can reassess him as a prospect at that point. So there you have it. The Avs four picks from the draft this year. Not really my favorite draft from them. Do like the Barons pick, but the rest of it is fine to maybe a little bit above fine. Nothing special. Don't think they were awful either. That is the end of this draft video review. Thank you for watching. Head on over to thednvr.com for all of our abs coverage, both prospects and the big team. I am Rudo, and now we wait for free agency.